afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming out today for a game between the St. Andrews Highlanders and the St. John's Mavericks. Now batting for the Mavericks, number three, Chuck. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for the late intro to the broadcast, but we are in here for the second game of a doubleheader. They snuck up on us here on the Vibe Network. They were uh, started a few minutes ahead of schedule, but we are here, we are ready to go, and we have already gotten our first out of the game. Choitner, leadoff hitter for the St. John's Mavericks, popped out to short, and now we are here in the top of the first inning for some more. We got Saul up at the plate and now. He's number uh, one, he's playing out at second base today. We only got uh, last names from the St. John's Cruz. This one's hit high into the air, but easily playable right field. And that's out number two. Mark Greenberg there, out in right field for the Highlanders, putting the, getting the put away there. Brings up Halligan. And for St. Andrews on the mound today or for the second game, is Jake Garcia. Of course, this is our second game of a pseudo doubleheader. Got a different squad up here. I believe another Houston school, St. John's Mavericks. As the Houston Christian team that we saw earlier at 11, um, they have traveled down to St. Stephen's, another Austin private school. And now they've made the trip back up here the Mavericks have, and the first game that they played today was against St. Stephen's. They won that game 9-1, to one, so a good day for them so far, hoping to pick up a, a doubleheader sweep, and of course, St. Andrews hoping to avoid that exact thing. They lost their first game just 2-1. to one. It was a great outing. St. Andrews, it was a game they probably should have won, had a, a few opportunities with runners in scoring position that they just... Um, weren't quite able to convert us. Here's the 3-0. That's tight inside for ball four. So the first runner aboard in this game is Halligan for the St. John's Mavericks, and he draws a four-pitch walk. Brings up Goldstein, number 13. Goldstein playing short, steps into the box, a righty. Here's Jake Garcia. He's on the mound for this second game. He's the leadoff hitter in the last one. He struggled early in the game, but was able to get more comfortable at the plate as the game went on. The first time he was up, he struck out, but he ended up with a pretty respectable one for three with a walk. He reached on both of his uh, final two ABs in the fourth and the sixth innings with a walk and a single. As this one's hit well into the outfield, that'll be down for a base hit. But no more. Each runner just takes one back. So Garcia in the first inning, he's given up a walk and a hit. Goldstein to first, Halligan over to second base. That brings up number 22, Luna. He's playing out in left field, and this is a tall young man. So now two on and two out for the pitcher, Jake Garcia, who will be batting second in the order today. Is that misses high for ball one? For St. Andrews, Chris Jarrett will be leading things off in the bottom half of the first, followed by Jake Garcia right there on the mound, and Charlie Welland, who's camped out behind home plate, hasn't caught since his freshman year, but they're trying him out 
senior behind the plate now. That one misses. He's having a hard time locating the strike zone right now. After two quick outs to start things off, the last two hitters have reached. My name's Jack Farrell. I'll be joining you here for this one. As that one gets away, each runner is going to advance. So it's a 3-0 count now. Three zero count. Just try to find the zone here. Of course, you still have one base empty that you can work with. Of course, you don't want to load the bases up in the first inning. But here's the pitch. Taking all the way. That's good for strike one. So the count's three and one for Luna. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Luna waits. He takes that one downstairs for ball four. So that's the second walk of the inning. Brings up Waller, number eight. Waller taking off his armor to get to the plate here. St. Andrew's having a hard time with number eights today, as in the last game, Aiden Warren with two very just great ABs that led to uh, RBI doubles that got them the win. You know, both of their RBI. Let's see if the number eight's lucky as this one's hit high into the air, drifting over, tough play, and reaching out to make the grab is Knox Matthews, and they will get out of the inning unscathed. That's a tough play. Knox Matthews had to cover a lot of ground to get that final out, but no run score on a hit in a pair of walks for the Mavs in the top half of the first inning. We head to the bottom of the first. It'll be Chris Jarrett, Jake Garcia, and Charlie Welland. And for St. John's, you got number 20, Fleming, on the mound. The St. John's team got plenty of substitutions to bring in off the bench if they need to. I'm going to go ahead and keep it here for this top half or this part in between innings. Let's go through a quick lineup. It's only last names for St. John's, but as they take the field, we're going to go ahead and take you through the defense. Sitting, well, there at catcher, he's not out there yet. Still, I believe, getting his equipment ready, but right now, sitting behind the plate, as you can see. It will be Waller, the guy who just uh, flew out to center field, but for now, Means is catching. And there we go. Now we got Waller out there. On the mound is Fleming. We mentioned that a moment ago. Let's take you around the bases. It's Halligan at first, Saul at second, Goldstein playing at short, Choitner, leadoff hitter at third base, and in the outfield, left to right, we have Luna, Wilson, and Leach. For St. Andrews, we're going to go ahead and take you through the starting lineup since we weren't able to before the top of the game. It's Chris Jarrett stepping to the plate. He'll be the leadoff man. Chris went two for four with a pair of singles in the uh, first game of the doubleheader. So Chris Jarrett and then Jake Garcia, the pitcher, will be on deck. Got out of that inning without surrendering a run. Nice job from him. And then Charlie Welland will be third. Noah Gorlick at four. Wes Aubin, Cole Nascone. Almost forgot how to say that name. Knox Matthews is at seven. Tommy Bullion is at eight. And Mark Greenberg is closing out the lineup at nine. Chris is playing second base today. As he fouls that one off, he's now down in the count. It's one and two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Good start for Fleming. As he gets the first hitter to wave around at that one. 
And that brings up the pitcher, Jake Garcia. Here's the delivery to him. Is that the first pitch fouled off? At the plate today, the Highlanders have been particularly aggressive. They're not afraid to just start swinging. The 0 1 to Garcia is outside for ball two, or for ball one, excuse me. In fact, looking at things, looking at the Houston Christian game, St. Andrews didn't draw a single walk in that one. And now Garcia up in the count, it's 3 1. So he can sit on this one if he wants to. But he'll get swinging, and that one's roped towards the dugout and off the netting. Heads up, everybody. Just a few extra base hits. Yes, excuse me, only one walk drawn in that entire game. And guess who drew it? Mr. Jake Garcia. Here's the payoff. That one's foul tipped. And catcher unable to come up with that one, so... Garcia is going to stay alive. Going to try and draw his second walk of the day, the first of this game. And looks at that one for ball four. And St. Andrews has their first man aboard with a walk. Both teams getting their first base runner on with a walk. Halligan walked for St. John's at, at, with a two out. And this one only has one, so Wellen comes up. He had a tough go of it at the plate in the last game. He was one for four as he takes first pitch for a strike. He was getting some good contact, so particularly disheartening with it as he was smacking the ball just right where the defense was waiting for him. His final time up, he doubled as he grounds this one to third. Throw over is not in time. It goes wide, so everyone will be safe. And Garcia is going to scamper over to third. It tried to turn two, probably should have just gone for the lead runner. But yeah, Welland survives there on E5. I mean, he very well could have beaten that one out, but with the throwing error. We'll see, but yeah, Charlie had been hitting the ball very hard, and his last time up in the seventh, he was the tying run, and he hit a double. But he was unable to get him in, and St. Andrews lost that game 2-1. to one. But Welland, <laughs> though his weakest contact of the day, gets him on first, and now runners at the corners with one out for the Highlanders and Noah Gorlick. As Noah ropes this one to short, throw over for one, throw over for two, is in time! A 6-5-3 a double play to end things. And... St. Andrews also unable to bring a run home. So after one, it's tied at zero apiece. We head to the top of the second inning. You are listening to Highlander Baseball on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, not yet another. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone, touchdown Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one! Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Here we go, top of the second inning here at St. Andrews. It'll be the 7-8-9 hitters due up for the Mavericks after they plated six batters in the first but weren't able to get any of them across. St. Andrews 
had runners on first and third with nobody out, or with one out. And uh, Noah Gorlick grounded into that inning ending 6-4-3 double play. So Garcia is out there uh, once again for the second inning. He's looking at his second inning of work. Had a couple walks and a base hit given up in the first inning. But fortunately for him, no runners came home to score. Let's see if he can get settled down here as we move forward into this game. Deeper and deeper as it's now the top of the second inning. Well in there behind the plate. It's Fleming, the pitcher, leading things off. It'll be Fleming, Wilson, and Leach. Here's Garcia's first pitch. That skips in the dirt across the plate. Ball one. So we're going <laughs> to try to piece together some of these first names. As Fleming rakes that one into right field, won't get over the head of the fielder, so just a single. Lead off singer, uh, single for Matt Fleming. As we piece together some of these first names from the crowd yelling. <laughs> it's, it's very handy, actually. So that's Matt Fleming. I believe we have a Peter Saul, Pete Saul. I think Goldstein uh, might have been Jack. Which, of course, great name. We are into the top of the second. Both of these games so far moving pretty quickly. Here's the throw over. Not in time. The first game was about two hours, not quite even. It was about an hour 50 minutes. Ended before 1 o'clock, started right around 11. This one got started a little bit early, just a mm, three, four, five minutes. That one misses high for ball two. Nate Wilson. He's at the plate now, down to one and oh, excuse me. With one runner on, it's Matt Fleming. Leach in the nine spot, playing in right field, is on deck. The 1-0 to Wilson, and that one's hit weakly. Throw over to one. No play at second. Good job from Jarrett recognizing where that out was going to be. So Fleming reaches second base. So Nate Wilson is the first out of the inning. It's a ground out to second base. Brings up Leach. Jarrett looks at the runner. First pitch on the way is no good. Knocked down by Welland. Anyone had a chance to get away. Getting the signs. Here's the 1-0. That one misses, gets away. That's off the glove of Welland. Counts 2-0. Now with a runner on third base, it's Fleming. Looks like they have a pinch runner actually in for Fleming. Of course, there's a nifty little rule you can pinch uh, run for pitchers and catchers without actually subbing them out the game. So here's a well-hit ball into left field. This should score the runner. It'll be an out. But tagging and scoring to open things up. Does that... Fernelius is the one to come in and score off of that. So it is a one to nothing game here in the top of the second now with two outs. 
in favor of the Mavs. Got the out. Order turns over. It's Matt Choitner now. Choitner takes the first pitch. Strike one. His first time up. He popped out to short. So after all that, we're back to the top of the order. It's one to nothing in favor of the Mavs. That's a nice little pitch. Breaking ball in there. Strike two. It was nasty. The 0-2. Garcia on the mound. The pitch. That one's hit high in the air out of play. Heads up. As we very thankful after a very rainy end of the week had to postpone and push back a lot of games on the network. So here's another 0-2 and that one's chopped to short. Backhanded. Unable to get it, just eat this one. And that's an infield single for Matt Choitner. His first to the game, he's one for two. <laughs> Brings up Pete Saul. Or Peter. Number one. Second baseman. He flew out to right field his last time up. It's a ball, but now a 1 0 count. Halligan on deck. His last time up, he walked. Here's the pitch. No, that's uh, downstairs is ball two. Missed low. That's inside ball three. The count's 3-0 now. Garcia is early, at least, having a little bit of trouble locating some of these pitches. The 3-0. Taken all the way. That's ball four. Choitner heads to second. Two on, two outs. Brings up Halligan. First pitch misses low. Unfortunately, picked up the loss, but Cole Nascone. He was dealing against Houston Christian. He only gave up two runs. Unfortunately, his team was only able to give him one run of support as this one's hit down the line, and that'll be a foul ball. That one was hooking over. It was very close. Umpire making the right call there. Very fortunate for them. That one would have bounced to the corner. Everyone would have been screaming around the bags. So a break for Garcia and the Highlanders. Halligan looking now at a one and one. It's again with two on and two outs. Garcia trying to get out of this inning after only giving up one so far. The one one. That one skips into the dirt. Each runner is going to go. So, Saul to second, Choitner to third. Two balls and a strike.
Halligan, who's 0 for 0 with a walk today. He's playing third base, or first base, excuse me. The 2 1. That one's hit high into the air. That's arcing out of play. Heads up, everybody. Right off the Highlander dugout. That's the second strike on Halligan. So it counts two and two. The two two. Garcia. Chop foul. And an athletic play by the Mavericks base coach to field that high bouncing grounder. Bare handed, nonetheless. My goodness. Runners at second and third, two outs, two balls, two strikes. Second inning. Hey. This one's hit high into the air. Tough play. This will get down for a base hit. Two runs will score. And Halligan will stay at first with the two RBI single. It's three to nothing now as Joyner and Saul both scamper home. So a three-run inning so far. Seven. Seventh batter of the game, uh, of the inning so far for the Mavericks. Goldstein is one for one so far with a single in the first inning. This one's hit to third. Eight up. Gorlick, the throw over is in time, but off the bag. Throw pulled Nasconi off the bag. And Goldstein is in there with an infield single. Beat out the throw. That pushes Halligan up to second base and brings up Luna. Luna walked up, or walked his first time up. Giving him that 0 for 0 still. This one's hit to first base, fielded, and Nasconi is there for the putout. So three runs come across on three hits and a walk for St. John's. Garcia is able to get out of it without surrendering any more. We head to the bottom of the second inning. It'll be Wes Aubin leading things off. It's the five, six, seven hitters due up for St. Andrews. We'd like to thank you all for tuning in to the broadcast today. Enjoy bringing you these weekend doubleheaders. Always nice to get some afternoon baseball going. And another special thanks to the uh, fine folks at Academy Sports and Outdoors for sponsoring the broadcast. Gear up this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoors. We head to the bottom of the second. Highlander Baseball returns in a moment. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. 
Aubin leading things off in the second. Takes ball one. St. Andrews trailing early in this one. It's three to nothing here in the bottom of the second. Jack Farrell joining you for this one if you're just tuning in. Looking forward to it. Our second game of the doubleheader. This Mavs team coming off a of victory earlier today as well. Counts 2-1. Fleming, swing and a foul ball. Matt Fleming, the pitcher out there again for his second inning of work. Had a strikeout and a walk in the first inning and forced a double play ball. Hit well and over the head of the second baseman and too far in front of the right fielder. So another hit for Wes Aubin. Has it a uh, one for one now with a single? And looking at his stat sheet from the last game, he was three for three, the most productive hitter that the Highlanders had. He was three for three with three singles, so that's four straight hits for Matt Fleming, or excuse me, for uh, Wes Aubin. Matt Fleming, the pitcher, as Nasconi gets a, some good contact on that one, but he flies out to center field, ranging over to make that play was Nate Wilson. Nascone can't reach in his first appearance after a stellar outing on the mound. Unfortunately, he w does pick up the loss, but that that loss definitely not on him. That loss is on cold bats at inter inopportune times. This here's Knox Matthews, center fielder number three. He was one for three in the first game against Houston Christian. He's looking at an 0-1 count. Be Tommy Bullion is on deck. That's in there for strike two. Bullion DHing, which means uh, Andrew Higginbotham is playing out in left field, but he's not hitting today. Same situation that we had in that first game of the doubleheader. Higgy just playing out in the field, although left field, not a lot not a lot hit out there in the last game. It felt like right field was getting all the attention. Lefties were sitting on things very well. Check swing. Didn't go. It felt like the lefties in that game were in the whole of things, pushing them far into right field, and righties were <laughs> getting out on things late and just going opposite field with it. Like there wasn't much hit out left field way. Bummer. When I played my little league, I was off and out, and ooh, is this one? That's going to plunk Knox Matthews. And some uh, of a Mavericks fan listening from Houston, shout out to you. I, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't get your name, but uh, your husband just gave me a list of first names, which I greatly, greatly appreciate. So, yep, Matt Fleming. That one's hit on the first base side, but foul. And would you look at that? That's Catcher Halligan. Now we know his first name. Beautiful. Now 0-1 to Bullion. Runners at first and second on the hit by pitch to Matthews. Aubin moves up to second on that, by the way. The 0-2. That misses. Tommy stays alive, DHing. This one's hit into the air and foul. That 
As Bouillon swings and misses it, it gets away. So runners go back. I don't know what's happening. That They ran as he lost the ball, but he gets over, and now they're going to try and go for third. Runner in a pickle. Are they both out? Why are they both out? It was Bouillon struck out. Yeah, that's weird. Bouillon struck out, but the catcher didn't catch it, so he ran. Got the first base. The runners went. So yeah, it's, uh, you can't advance the runner there if he's at first. So uh, the, the ruling there, you can't advance the, the, the strikeout counts because you can't advance that runner. And then I guess they got the other out. So that is the two outs. So it's a weird scoring thing. We're just going to call it a K. And I guess Matthews will just say he was out. <laughs> so a weird situation here. As that goes in the scorebook, I'm not sure how, but now moving back. That brings up the top of the third inning. Kirk Waller will be leading things off for St. John's. So basically, the Highlanders shouldn't have run. They should have just stayed. Team forgot the rules, so figured if they were running, they must know what they're doing, but it's a tough situation there for them. Here's Kirk Waller. Kirk flew out to center field his first time up. He takes that one for a strike. It's one and one. Take strike two. This one's chopped weakly to the pitcher. Garcia fields flips out number one. Brings up Matt Fleming. And pitcher, he singled and came around to score in the second inning. Scored the first run of the ball game for the Mavericks. But now he's up with nobody out. Or uh, nobody on and one out. Swing and foul ball. Jake Garcia, this is his third inning. He's given up three runs so far. Does he have to strike anybody out? Because this one will stay in fair play. Welland and Garcia is there to make the play. Got three guys, a catcher, a pitcher, and a third baseman ranging over to make that one. But the pop-up goes to the pitcher. So Garcia has two putouts.
Brings up Nate Wilson center field. Grounded out his first time up. Garcia got a clutch up here in the first inning he gave up. Or he got the first two out and then gave up a walk, a single, and a walk. So looking for their first one, two, three inning. Well, and <laughs> the throw a little high. This one popped high in the air. That'll be out of play. Watch your heads, everybody. So with that foul ball, it's two balls now with one strike. Here's the 2-1. This is inside ball three. So this one's hit. Also very, very high, but easily playable. Oh, but they aren't able to get over and make the play. They didn't get underneath it, tried to catch it to the side. And Nate Wilson somehow in there with a double. <laughs> no one hung up there long enough. So he reaches second on the high pop-up. Brings up Charlie Leach. Last time he was up, he flew out to left field. It was a sack fly, brought home a run, brought home Fleming. Nice pitch, Leach swings through the first one. Miss for a strike. Garcia looks at the runner at second. The 0 1 pitch. Skips before it gets to the plate. Ball, uh, ball one. The 1 1 to Leach. Throwback. This one hit high into the air, and, well, that one fouled off, actually. Looks like it was popped up, but not quite. Well, and fooled me with that one. Counts one and two now. One, two. Misses low. Top of the third. One on, two outs. Two strikes, two balls. Here's the 2-2 from Garcia. He's missing low a lot. A lot of these pitches have dived down on him. Count goes full. Top of the order due up now. Choitner on deck. Ball four. Brings up Matt Choitner. Or Chotner. Ch 
Totner reached his last time up, and he came around to score. He had a single in the second inning. So he takes that pitch for a ball. It's a much tighter zone today than it was in the first ball game. It was a big zone, a lot of strikeouts. In fact, Nascone had 10 Ks in that first game of the doubleheader. That one misses inside for ball two. The 2 0. Garcia looks the runner back to second base. That misses tight ball three. Oh, no, they're going to. Give him the strike there. Umpire fooled me that time. 2-1. That's definitely a ball. Well, and Garcia both getting that chemistry down. Well, and playing out of his normal position. Here's the 3-1 pitch. That's high for ball four. Brings up Pete Saul. Saul's 0 for 1 pop out and a walk in the second inning. He also came around to score the third run of the game. Base is loaded. That's strike one. They are juiced. Nate Wilson is there at third. Charlie Leach is up there at second base. Matt Chotner he, uh, drew the walks at first base. The 0-1 misses low for ball two, or for ball one, excuse me. Saul at the plate, 1-1 one, one count. Garcia looking for his second run free inning as this one is grounded up the middle too short and he'll step on the oh he didn't need to throw he could have stepped on the bag throw not in time I'm not sure about the decision to go to one there Seemed like he could have had the easy force at first base or at second base excuse me instead that brings home a run and everybody's safe Halligan singled and brought home two runs last inning. And now he's here with the bases loaded. Was Halligan is <laughs> way out ahead of that one. And he hit that thing about 400 feet. Way out of play. <laughs> Smoked that ball. I'm sitting on that one. Here's catcher Halligan. A one count, two outs, everybody on. Takes that one outside, that's ball one. Garcia delivers. That misses ball two. So the sun is out in full force now. Very much appreciate that. 
Two balls, one strike. That misses as well, ball three. It's a 3 1. Garcia looking at the runners. Halligan steps in. He has a single and a walk, so he's reached both times he's been up. These runners all taking very big leads. Trying to bring them all home here on anything into the outfield. This one's hit towards us, right? That one's going right for the stands. Heads up, everybody. And that hit some hands. As with that foul ball, Halligan count goes full. Everyone will be moving. Here's 3-2. Garcia's delivery. And that one's hit well into the outfield. That'll be over the head of Greenberg, the right fielder. Everyone coming around to score here. He will clear the bases. And Halligan is going to stay there at second base for a bases clearing two-out double. And all the damage here has come with two outs. Kirk Waller and Matt Fleming started the inning. They both got out. And everything it senses come with two outs. It's a three RBI. A three RBI du uh, double for Hallig uh, yeah for Halligan, and it's seven to nothing here in the third. Brings up Jack Goldstein with a one on and two out. And the St. John's team, they have figured out sports involving bases and bats. Remember, he, we were here for a um, St. Andrews softball game and in the first inning. This here's the pitch. This one hit high into the air. And that's going to go behind the stands this time. Not into them. As Goldstein's looking at a ball and a strike now. But yeah, the uh, St. John softball team batted around in the first inning uh, two entire separate times. So they, they played it about 20, 21 batters in the first inning. And of course, this, uh, this is not that bad. This St. Andrews team pretty successful through the first inning. Uh, they did load the bases, but they were able to get out of it. And since then, it's been tough going for Garcia. Giving up three now, uh, four runs in this inning. Three in the second. But here's Goldstein. He's the eighth batter of the inning. This one is hit high in fair territory. Welland. And they once again can't get it, and the run's going to come home to score. That's a foul ball, though. So, excuse that. The runner will go back to third. But no one able to come there and find that super high pop-up. Hey, 
So two balls, two strikes to Goldstein. Jack's two for two with a couple singles. Playing short. Now he's looking at a man on second base, trying to drive him home, make it eight to nothing here in the third. Here's the 2 2. That's hit well, but to third base. Throw over from Gorlick is in time, and finally, St. Andrews out of the inning. But four runs score on a couple of hits and three walks. So we head to the bottom of the fifth, or the bottom of the third for St. Andrews. It will be 9 1 2 hitters due up. We'll be right back. Formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VIPE.com. VIPE is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to VIPE, V-Y-P-E dot com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Back in for the bottom of the third. It's been a tough go for the Highlanders in this one. St. John's team is deadly at all parts of the order. They lead 7 to nothing here in the bottom of the third. And very close to looking like a much different game there in the second inning briefly. Highlanders had two on with one out. With runners at the corners, but this one quickly line out to right field. Charlie Leach able to go and get that one. A line out to nine. Where the first out of the inning brings up Chris Jarrett, his second time at the plate. Struck out his first time up in the first inning. Lead off hitter. That one's fouled off. Ball, uh, strike two, a ball and a strike. Or strike one, a ball and a strike. Moffitt today, huh? Too much baseball today. It's frying my brain. As this one is chopped weakly, but with Jarrett's speed, it's going to be a tough play, and they'll get him in time. Jarrett goes down out number two with the ground out to shortstop. 6-3 on the putout. Brings up Jake Garcia, who's been pitching today. It's Garcia gets a hold of this one, but right into the teeth of the defense. Charlie Leach with another put out this inning. And a quick one, two, three for St. Andrews as we go back to the top. Now the fourth inning. Tyson Luna, five, six, seven hitters going to be due up for St. John's. We'll be right back. Yeah. For the end zone, touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Hallelujah. 
Vipe, go to VipeVYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vipe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vipe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VipeVYPE.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vipe stands above the rest. Vipe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Back in here for the top of the fourth inning. Got a pitching change for the Highlanders. Charlie Welland. Looks like pitcher and catcher will just be swapping spots. So Jake Garcia moves behind the plate. And Charlie Welland moves to the mound. So they're getting a few more warm-up tosses in as Tyson Luna will lead things off here in the fourth inning for St. John's. And Tyson Luna steps to the plate. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. His last time up he grounded out to first base. That ended that first lucrative inning, the second inning where they scored three. But he's up now looking to take his hacks against a new pitcher, Charlie Welland. Is Char uh, Charlie's first pitch misses four, ball one. The 1-0. That one's hit well, high into center field. And Knox Matthews can't make the play. It bounced off his glove. So Tyson reaches on the E8, and he gets two bags out of it. Brings up Kurt Waller, who's 0 for 2 today. He's looking to make it one for three and drive in that run, make it eight nothing. Tough for Welland is that probably should have been out number one. That gets away, runner goes. Garcia's just gonna have to eat this one. This Luna now at third base with nobody out. And there's a lot of ways to score this. Here's the pitch. That's going to miss high for ball two. Wellens 2-0 pitch on the way. That skips in the dirt, ball three. Matt Fleming, pitcher on deck. Popped out to the pitcher his last time up. Pitch gets away, runner comes home. As it gets away, it we will have our first sub of the game. Kirk Waller going to step out. Oh, no, excuse me. He's the catcher, so um, it'll be a pinch running situation. He'll be able to come back in the game if they want him to. Ooh, that throwback was mighty close. Looked like he might have gotten him, but they give him the safe safety there. It's Kirk Waller. Ooh, 
was the man who drew the walk to get that man on first. It's now eight to nothing with that run coming home and the ball getting away. That's outside. Throw over. Not in time. Counts 2 0. Fleming 1 for 2 on the day. Fells that one off. It's 2 to 1. Mavs with a healthy lead. It's 8 nothing here in the fourth inning. Looking to add to it as well and as. And a little bit of a tough time locating some of these pitches. That one is fouled off. Watch out. Strike two. The 2-2. Two -two. Hit him. Another pinch runner. Nate Wilson to the plate now. Came around to score his last time up. Still no outs. Two runners on. One run has scored. It's in there, strike one. The ball and a strike to Wilson. Time back in for Wilson. Ball and a strike from Welland. Here's the pitch. That misses. Two balls, one strike. As this one's hit well through the infield. Going to get by everybody. They're going to wave the runner in. Throw comes home. It will not be in time. So run scores. Everybody remains safe. It's 9-0 here in the fourth. So a single for Nate Wilson. Brings up Chuck Leach. Charlie's uh, been at the plate twice today. He's a uh, has an RBI sack fly and a walk, and in that third inning, he also came around to score second run of the inning. Well, I'm going to come off the mound here. His pitching night is over. Wes Aubin will be on the mound now, former shorty. 
And we got a quick pitching change, so we're going to go ahead and put the headsets down. We'll be right back. Bike Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at BikeBYPE.com. Bike is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. What takes the Wilson? She fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to BikeBYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vipe stands above the rest. Vipe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vipe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. Coming back from the pitching change, it'll be Wes Aubin moving forward. Got some movement around the infield. We'll get that in a moment. As we have... Let's check this. It'll be Garcia remaining. So yeah, Garcia will stay behind the catcher. It looks like Welland will be moved to short as he Welland was unable to get an out. Gave up two runs. Gorlick has been moved from third to second. And now playing short is going to be Chris Jarrett. So let's get everything all s sorted on the scorecard here. Garlic to four, and Welland in at five. Great. Now 1-0 count as Aubin's first pitch missed for a ball. It's ball two now. Aubin's 2-0. That one's in there for strike one. Aubin inherits two runners. Fleming at second. Wilson at first. Two one. That's high. Three one. It's in there. Strike two. Three two count now. Still nobody out here in the th uh, fourth inning. The payoff. That one's hit well. In the right center field. That'll be down for a base hit. One runner will be waved around. 
and Leach will uh, scoot into second with a no out double, brings home one of the runs. But Wilson stuck there at third base now. So Charlie Leach able to reach it with a double. And now two runners in scoring position with nobody out. The score is now 10 to nothing. Matt Schottner is up. He's one for two today with a single, a walk, and a pop out to shortstop. Takes pitch number one for a ball. Is these Highlander pitchers, all of them in this game, have just been struggling throwing strikes. No one's been able to find the zone, as we mentioned. It's a much tighter zone than it was in the first game. I'm not saying it's... I mean, I'm not, I'm not giving an opinion on that one way or the other. It's just, um, last umpire, I believe he's the one who's out there by second base now. His zone was much bigger, much easier for pitchers to handle, I believe. And the zone has been consistent. Y everyone's getting a fair shake here. It's just this zone is a lot physically smaller. As we might have our first out as this one's hit over into left field, and it is... Higgy getting the put out there, but one runner will tag and score. So Nate Wilson comes in on the sack fly from Matt Schottner. So now one down, finally getting that first out. As Nate Wilson comes home, and Charlie Leach is going to stay camped out there at second base. And ladies and gents, Pete Saul has been taken out of the ball game. We got our first sub. It's Childers. Childers, the first pinch hitter of the game for the Mavs. We'll see if they get some more in here as this game goes along. It's now 11 nothing in this ball game with that tag coming home. Here's the 1-0. This is outside. It's 2-0. The 2-0 to Childers. As Aubin steps to the rubber, is fouled off and out of play. So there's strike one. Get him any way you can. Another foul ball. This one less out of play, but still fouled it off the first base side over the St. John's dugout. So 2-2. Catcher Halligan on deck once again. And the base is clearing double in the third inning. This one gets away. Runner's going to go to third. So Leach on third base. Count goes full. 3 2 1 with a runner on third. Here's the payoff. That one's fouled off, so Childers stays alive. Here's another payoff. Missed him. It's a great A-B. For the pinch hitter, Childers. Keep it going. 
Halligan, this is his third time to the plate. He's got a walk, a single, and a double. Has he got a hold of that one? That should be playable. It's into shallow right. But that's going to bounce in. They weren't looking for it. The runner's going to come home from third. Everybody's safe. So now 12 nothing. As Jack Goldstein comes up, he's two for three today, a pair of singles. This is the ninth batter of the inning for St. John's. He's on with two runners and one out. He takes that one inside. Very quickly, we'd like to give everybody a reminder that the fine folks at Academy Sports and Outdoors are doing us a favor sponsoring our broadcast for the baseball season for all the ways you love to play academy sports and outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there now Aubin steps back in 2-0 here's his delivery this one's hit high into the air. That's drifting out of play. And there it will land. Goldstein. He's looking at two balls and one strike on the count. This point. No. Don't look at the score, just treat it like some good practice here. As that misses outside, that's ball three. The 3 1 pitch, the Goldstein. Is foul tipped into the glove. Jake Garcia, the count goes full. Goldstein pops this one up. And this one might drop in as well. It does. St. Andrews, is, they can't field anything. They've, they've had a lot of pop-ups, many, many of them playable. They just haven't been able to get any of them. And Goldstein reaches on a some kind of error. Give it a base hit. And officially, they've batted around. Childers now on third. Halligan is there at second. The bases are loaded with one out. That brings up Tyson Luna. He's got a chance to blow this even further open. This one gets away, and they're not going to go. It's got to be frustrating for the pitching staff. It's when you're getting balls in play that are should be outs and you're just not converting them. The 1-0. That one's hit high and drifting out of play on the le left field side and it goes out of play. So now a ball and a strike to Tyson Luna. Kirk Waller. On deck. Yeah, Tyson Luna's last time up, he hit a bloopy fly ball that went off the 
glove of an outfielder. His first time up in this inning. He looks at that one for strike two. One, two count to him. One out. That misses ball two. He gets a hold of this one. This one's lifted high into the air. That might drop. That will drop. That one, a great hit just in between two outfielders. Everyone's screaming around the bags. Only one run will score, though. So now 13 nothing with one out, and then they're going to go look at Aubin. Do they have anybody else they can put out there? So far, two pitchers in this fourth inning have faced ten batters and gotten collectively one out. As it looks like Tommy Bullion is going to be pitching now. So with another pitching change, we're going to go ahead and take another break on the broadcast. And when we come back, we'll have more of this top of the fourth. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vipe, and hit Find Your School to see what Vipe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vipe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vipe, Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at Vibe, Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Back in here after the pitching change. Sorry, I had some technical difficulties getting through. There's always something, right? They're perfect through the first game and a half through Tech, and here in the top of the fourth, start losing some stuff. But well, we're all good now. An 0 2 count after Bouillon becomes the new pitcher. He's been DHing, and now he's pitching and hitting, I believe. Highlanders still trying to get out of this inning. Six runs given up so far. 
Here's the one too. Kirk Waller looking at a 2 2 count now. Waller walked his last time up in this inning. This one's roped into the infield. On to second for one, on to first for two. A four, six, three double play to get out of that tough fourth inning. Highlanders up in the bottom of the fifth, or bottom of the fourth, excuse me. <laughs> I'm skipping ahead. It will be Charlie Willand due up if things stay as are in the bottom of the fourth. It'll be three, four, five hitters due up. And we'll be right back. Fight Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at FightBYPE.com. Fight is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 for 13, not yet another verse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. What takes the Wilson? She fires the three. Oh my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to FightBYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Here we are for the bottom of the fourth. Nice double play. Tommy Bullion getting out of that inning. Nice job from him. It's 13 nothing. Tommy. Oh. First pitch misses, ball one. Just about to say. Tommy Bullion faced one batter, forced double play. Maybe he should be the man going forward, right? The good single batter outing for him in that top of the fourth, that dangerous, scary top of the fourth, as it was a six-run top of the fourth. Scores to 13 nothing. As Matt Fleming out there for another inning of work, he's just walked the leadoff man. Four pitches, Charlie Welland reaches. Brings up Noah Gorlick. This is his second time at the plate. He grounded into a double play his first time up. Went six, four, three. 1-0. Misses high, so six straight balls to start the inning for Fleming. Three oh. There we go. Strike one. Fleming rushing or Fleming rushing his delivery just a little bit. At the start of the inning, it seems like. Now he settles in. Here's a 3-1. Count goes full. So after seven straight balls, he's got two strikes in a row. Here's the payoff pitch. Ooh. That was low and away it looked like for ball four close so pair walks just 
start things off. No out. Still 13 nothing. Wes Aubin with a chance to cut into this deficit a little bit. Takes first pitch for strike one. One misses outside for ball one. This one's hit well. It looks like it might get into the gap, and it does. It's going to get around the center fielder and roll to the wall. Everyone coming around. One run will score. Welland comes around from second. So now we got runners on second and third with no out. And Wes Aubin. That's five hits in a row for him. Keep it going. Gorlick now over there at third base. They're drawing the walk. And there we go. No more donut on the scoreboard. Swing and a miss for Nasconi. Strike one. Takes that one outside, it's ball one. This one's hit high into the air, maybe deep enough to score a run. Coming up on it, but no. Runner doesn't tag. Nice play out in left field from Tyson Luna. Brings up Knox Matthews. He was hit by a pitch his first time up. So this one's hit, and that'll get down for a base hit into shallow right. One run scores. Now we got runners at the corners with just one out. Good job from Gorlick getting home to s score there. Now Knox Matthews with his first hit of the ball game. He's reached both times up, though. Knox was one for three in the first game of this doubleheader. Tommy, the pitcher, first and foremost, fouls this one off strike one. The 0-1. Foul tipped into the glove 0-2. Mark Greenberg on deck. Tommy's first time up, he struck out. This one he takes high, good take. Ball and two strikes to Tommy. That one missed outside, good take. From 0-2 to 2-2, and swing and a miss, strike three. So Tommy's over two with a pair of K's. Second out of the inning. Mark Greenberg steps to the plate. It's 13 to two. Mark Greenberg lined out into right field his last time up. He fouls off the first pitch. The Owen to Greenberg. Check the swing. So that one tailed off at the last minute, staying in the zone until it didn't. That's a swing and a miss. Greenberg now down a ball and two strikes. The one, two, way outside. That's going to get away. Runners are going to hold at third, but go from first to second. So. Aubin's going to chill at third base. Knox Matthews is going to scamper up to second. So now two runners in scoring position for Mark Greenberg. He is even in the count 2-2. Two -two. Here's the pitch. That missed him. This barely almost grazed him on the foot. And instead, the count will go full. So 
swing and a miss, strike three. That'll end the inning, but not before Highlanders are able to get some runs on the board. They score two on two walks and a, two hits. Two strikeouts in the inning for Fleming, the last two. As it looks like the Highlanders are going to come out for another inning. And Welland looks like he's going to be moved over to first base. We're going to go ahead and keep it here. We head to the top of the fifth. There we go. Garcia will be back catching Welland over there at first, as we mentioned. They have Higginbotham coming to the bench. Looks like we have a another pitcher. It's going to be Mark Greenberg. Got a few substitutions here. Aubin back at shortstop. Gorlick back at third base. Moved over there. Well, and now. There at first, it's Matthew, or Knox Matthews is out there in left field, now moved over from center. Let's see who's out there in center field. Can't always get a great look. It looks like Cole Nasconi was moved from first base over to center field. And I believe Bouillon is going to be out and right. Here we go. St. John's looking to extend their lead once again as we are here into the fifth inning. Matt Fleming. It's Mark Greenberg. We'll be pitching as we mentioned. It's Fleming leading things off. Greenberg steps to the rubber. Lefty Fleming steps in, swinging a miss, strike one. One to Fleming misses high. That's that one's roped into right field. That'll be down for a single. Another hit for St. John's. Matt Fleming, the leadoff man. Looks like we have another pinch hitter here. Nate Wilson is out of the game. Humphreys at the plate now. Swing and a miss. Humphreys steps to the plate for his first appearance with nobody out and a runner on in the fifth inning. Here's the pitch.
Pitch misses. Count goes 3-1. Excuse me, now the count has gone 3-1. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two. The payoff misses high. First two hitters on. Got another uh, pinch hitter. Landed McKelvey, number 23. Getting to get an opportunity for an RBI in his first time up, and that one misses. And everyone's going to scoot up two bags. One ball, no strikes, nobody out. Runners on second and third. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. The 1-1. One, one. That one's foul tip back, strike two. One, two. That's outside. Two, two. This one's fouled high into the air. Playable. Garcia got him. So that's out number one in the inning. Chotner comes up. He will inherit two runners on second and third. So last time up, he had a sack fly. That was in the fourth inning for the first out of that tough fourth inning. This one's hit high into the air on the infield. Aubin is able to get it. So now two outs. Childers up. Came in and pinch hit in the last inning. This is now the two spot. Childers walked his last time up. I believe he came around to score. Score holds at 13-2 for now. Childers with a chance to add to the lead. Excellent pitch from Greenberg. That's in there for a strike. <laughs> and Wyland loves it. He's beaming out there at first base. He's still having fun. Childers calls time. Swing and a miss. Greenberg is able to retire the side without giving up a run. It's 13. 15 to 2 as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Childers goes down on strikes to end it. We'll be back out here for the bottom of the fifth for St. Andrews. It will be the top of the order due up. Chris Jarrett 
will be the leadoff man here. Looks like Fleming is out there for another inning of work. Just the second inning of the ball game, the first one since the first inning that the Highlanders do not surrender any runs. He surrendered three in the second, four in the third, and six in the fourth. But they got two back in the fourth. So 13 to two. We are sniffing mercy rule territory at this point. But we'll definitely get through this half inning. It looks like we have a pinch hitter for the Highlanders. It'll be Marshall Harrell. He's a JV mainstay, but he's going to get a pinch hitting opportunity here down 11. So Chris Jarrett, looks like his day will be done. He's being pitch hit for here. But Harrell steps to the plate. Great number, 44. Swings at the first one. That's a grounder too short. The throw is in time for out number one. So Harold grounds out in his pinch hit opportunity. Brings up Jacob Garcia, the starting pitcher. Last time Jakey was up, he was a line out to right field. He takes the first pitch high for a ball. Welland on deck. Taking his practice cuts with a couple bats. The, the old Joe DiMaggio thing, right? I don't know. I might be too young for that. I feel like you always see old pictures of baseball players and they're swinging with like four bats. As this is weakly grounded to third base. Throw over. This will be a tough play. Wow. My goodness. What a play from Matt Schottner. Barehanded. Got the throw over on the money and in time. How about that? But here comes Welland. With the old school warm-up technique. I assume that was to simulate weight and I know they have the little weights that they stick on the end of bats now but I guess back in the the olden days you just had to swing a bunch of bats or maybe I'm completely wrong and it was for something else <laughs> I don't know I'm just trying to fill airtime it's 13 to 2 and Wellness is down 0-1 that's in their strike 2 <laughs> For number 22. Here's the pitch. That misses for ball one. One, two. That's hit high into the air. Is that going to be playable? No. A couple players tried to go over to grab it, but that one landed before anyone could go and scoop. So Noah Gorlick on deck. Well, and looking at a 1-2 count. Nobody on, two outs. Don't worry about the score. Don't ask. As well and takes, it's 2-2. Two -two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs for number 22. Highlanders have two runs also. So this one's fouled off. That one's hit. Fielded by the third baseman. Throw over and in time. And it looks like that might do it. That might mercy rule us. Down uh, more than 10 after 5. So it looks like that'll do it for us here on the Vipe Network. And in 5, the Highlanders fall in both games of this doubleheader 0-2. This one 13-2. This 
that program that they've got in the softball program and the baseball program at St. John's, just they've, they know what they're doing. It's an excellent, excellent program that they've got down there. But we'd like to thank you for tuning in, everybody. Um, for Highlander fans, sorry, couldn't have been a better result for the weekend, but I think the guys had a good amount of fun out here. I'd like to thank my QAs and Miss Suna Venkat and Merle Bertrand of the Vibe Network for everything that they do for us. I'd like to thank the fine folks at Academy Sports and Outdoors for sponsoring the broadcast. Everyone, you can get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. And with that, we're going to go ahead and sign off. It's weekend time. Hope you all have a good Saturday evening and a great Sunday. Hope if you were able to attend the game here, hope you have a safe travel home. And I've been Jack Farrell. It's been a pleasure broadcasting for you tonight. Hope you all have a great night and a great rest of your week.